Good morning, it's Thursday, February 11th, and this is the Herald Reviews podcast, The Daily Chirp. We're excited to bring you a closer look at one of our top stories, events in the community, local history, sports, and more. Today, Greyhound, the country's largest intercity bus transportation, has stopped service out of Sierra Vista. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Hi everyone, I'm Sean Lawley from the Lawley Automotive Group, and we've stocked up on inventory at all of our dealerships. If you've been thinking about a new car, we've got the deal for you on a new Buick, GMC, Chevrolet, Ford, Kia, Hyundai, Honda, Nissan, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. You don't have to go to Tucson or Phoenix to buy a new vehicle. We're your hometown dealer since 1995. We'll beat the big city dealers in price, and our customer service is small town dealer friendly. Come into any one of the Lawley dealerships today, or shop lawleycars.com and see why nobody beats a Lawley deal. Nobody. Before we begin, some local history. Completed in 1882, Tombstone's gravity-fed wrought iron pipeline bringing spring water down from the Huachuca Mountains enabled the community to survive and thrive during its heyday. Though much has changed since then, Tombstone still relies on the spring water not just to serve its residents and visitors, but also to be prepared for fires. Today's history is brought to you by Benson Hospital. Benson Hospital's comprehensive rehabilitation team strives to get you back on your feet and improve your lifestyle, offering physical, occupational, and speech therapy. For more information, visit BensonHospital.org or call 520-586-2262. Now our feature story. A decrease in ridership over the last few months, courtesy of COVID-19, has prompted Greyhound, the country's largest intercity bus transportation, to pull out of Sierra Vista. An executive report prepared by city staff said that, according to Greyhound, the pandemic has severely impacted ridership demand and revenues. So what does this mean? Well, individuals who counted on the buses to take them to Benson, Tucson, Phoenix, and Rio Rico will now have to find other means of traveling there. Greyhound did indicate that they will continue to be active in regional transportation meetings, and that they may return if demand patterns return to pre-pandemic levels. But as of mid-January, service to and from Sierra Vista has been halted indefinitely. And this doesn't just affect our community. Greyhound is temporarily reducing schedules across their network, particularly in the Northeast as a result of the drop in demand due to coronavirus. Linda Jones, Sierra Vista's transportation administrator, said the city will lose some money because of the bus company's departure, to the tune of $100 a month. Jones also emphasized that she knows area residents rely on this service as the most affordable means of transportation, and she certainly hopes that Greyhound will bring the route to Sierra Vista back in the future. City Councilwoman Carolyn Umfrey had a similar message at Tuesday's City Council work session. Um, I'm sad to see Greyhound no longer servicing the area, but I think it's said that they might come back maybe someday. They'll consider it. Well, it's COVID travel related. As yeah, well as I think also maybe next time if when they, because I think they'll set up again. They'll set up operations again. Um, they never offered their tickets online, so people had to like wait <laughs> and try to get them at the train. It, you know, it just made it like an extra obstacle for when people. They, that, when they come back to us, I think they will. We need to say you need to put your tickets online if you're planning on making money down here because that just makes – in today's world, it makes no sense not to have online access. Yeah, I'm, well, I, I oh, I'm sorry. Agree. They only they only put online. So the people well, that showed up online. to the transit center okay. and mix up. But, like, we, they didn't give us a way to, like, we got to figure, we gotta figure a way to sell tickets. Partner them. With them. Yeah, so. But it's not just a greyhound. The pandemic has prompted a drop in the ridership of the city's bus system as well. The lobby at the Vista Transit Center was recently closed except for ticket sales and the restroom. To stay up to date with this story, visit us at myheraldreview.com. Thanks for listening. Before we continue, a quick message from our sponsors, Prestige Family Living. At Prestige Assisted Living at Sierra Vista, we aim to provide our residents ways to stay active and engaged through our Ageless Grace Fitness and Wellness Programming. Join us every Friday at 1030 a.m. for free online Ageless Grace classes. Visit NotYourGrandma'sNursingHome.com to sign up today. Now, a quick update on high school wrestling, brought to you by Apex Network Physical Therapy. Voted Best of Cochise County 2020, Apex Network provides exceptional care to the Sierra Vista and Benson communities. Choose Apex Network for all of your physical therapy needs. To learn more, go to apexnetworkpt.com. The Tigers wrestling team hosted Tombstone High School last Wednesday for what turned out to be a tune-up match for both teams. 
Five of the matches were exhibition matches due to wrestlers not meeting their respective weight class along with other reasons. The last two matches featured two Tombstone wrestlers since St. David didn't have wrestlers in the 185 and heavyweight weight classes. St. David was back on the mat last weekend hosting Thatcher. And Tombstone returns to action tomorrow, February 12th, hosting Wilcox. Next, this week we're hearing from members of our community on what they hope to see for the future of Cochise County, brought to you by our sponsors, Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. You are probably spending a lot more quality time at home these days, keeping you and your family safe. And that can present some opportunities that you usually don't experience, like maybe laughing together at a funny movie, or screaming together at a scary movie, pitching in to make a special dinner, or maybe you're keeping in touch with friends and relatives and other places on your devices. And it just so happens that many of the activities we're sharing with each other are made possible by electricity. At Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, we know that you are depending on us both for fun and serious needs. And we want you to know that we're here for you day and night, sunshine or storm, easygoing times or trying times like now, making sure you're getting the power that you need every day to meet your needs. For over 85 years, through all kinds of tough times, we've been there for our members. And even though you may not see us, we're here for you now. Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, owned by those we serve. Today, we're hearing from Fatima Duran of Douglas on what she thinks could improve Cochise County. You know, it'd be lovely just to have everybody back in Cochise County, our visitors from Mexico and all the tourists that were here before COVID happened. It'd be very lovely to have that and, you know, the possibilities of having businesses grow again. We've lost a lot of businesses during this time and it'd be very nice to have everybody's faces without masks eventually after everything goes well and hopefully everybody in good health. Finally, today we're remembering the life of Jimmy Charles Morris of Sierra Vista. Jimmy was born in Enterprise, Alabama, and graduated from Enterprise High School in 1965. He received a football scholarship from Troy State University, but decided to join the United States Army. During his military career, he was stationed at Fort Gordon, Fort Belvoir, Radford Arsenal, Fort Rucker, and had 16 years of foreign service in Germany and Korea with additional stops in Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Italy. After 26 years of service, he retired honorably as a Chief Warrant Officer 4. He received the National Defense Service Medal with one Bronze Star and Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal. After retirement, Jimmy attended Troy University, earning his bachelor's degree in accounting and started a new career as a civil service employee with the Department of the Army. Those that know Jimmy knows that he loved fast cars and was a member of many car clubs. He enjoyed attending car shows and going to racetracks, not only as a spectator, but at times as a participant. His other passions included movies, computers, and Alabama football. He will be greatly missed. Thank you for taking a moment with us today to remember and celebrate Jimmy's life. Thanks for tuning in to the Herald Review podcast today. Join us again on Friday. And remember, the Herald Review is here for you with local news you can trust. For more information on any of the stories you heard about today, visit us at myheraldreview.com. Right now, you can become a member starting at just $1.99 per week. Want to stay up to date on what's going on? Join Neighbor, your trusted neighborhood community. Neighbor is a free online forum you can trust to connect with your community, focus on facts, and make a difference. Join the conversation. Visit nabur.myheraldreview.com.